Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank and trust you that you are forevermore available. On this premise, we celebrate you as we gather to teach your word, to study your word, to discuss your word, and to publicize your word. So, Lord, that let the power of the impulse of your Holy Spirit and us afresh and perfect all that matters to these sessions through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome. This is the second study of the book of the letter to the one and only lady that Paul wrote to Philemon. And we're just considering two or three verses of scripture and we'll be approaching it from the premise of this first, I've added second and 10th verses, the trials and challenges of Christianity. We'll be doing the same thing next week, but on a different subject. Today, we look at it from the premise of personalities. You know, let me just read these two or three verses. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our brother, our beloved fellow worker, and to Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and I put it in capital, and the church in your house. And verse 10 says, I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. You know, when you talk about definitions, a trial is an experience that is hard to endure. It can come as suffering. It can even come as a non-destructive temptation from God. A trial is an experience, is a fact of the state of being tried. That means being subjected to an experience that is hard to endure. And when we're talking about challenges, we're talking about things that demand a lot of attention and hard work. I will not bother to define Christianity. A Christian is somebody who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and the third of world population are at least nominal Christians. They are members of one parish, one denomination or so or the other. They confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But we are more or less focusing on the personality, the whole nature and character of that person. And these are the, I, these are the, these are the angles from which we want to see who the man is. And particularly, we'll be focusing on Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon, the host, co-pastor, or elder. Well, by way of introduction, Christianity is a trial to the world, just as the world is trying to the Christian faith. And that's why this theme of this study is important to you and I. You know, the trying of our faith is unavoidable. Forget it. If you're a Christian on your way to heaven, you will go through trials. There is no victory without examination. You see, this, the teaching of Jesus Christ in John chapter 15 is about the vine and the branches. But towards the end, he talked about the inevitable persecutions. And in verse 20 of John chapter 15, he told them blunt, point, point blank, the servant is not greater than his Lord. And he added, if they have persecuted me, they also will persecute you. And as soon as verse 16 started, as a continuation of his teaching, he said in verse 1, I've said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. Don't go through unreasonable crash. And he ended chapter 16, verse 33, and said, These things have I spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but take courage and overcome the world. So the trying of our faith is unavoidable. 
and it can be rewarding if we face trials in the godly way. James chapter 1 verse, from verse 2, 3, and 4 tell us, brothers, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and tired, wanting nothing. So if you are praying to have the peace and patience, you have provocation. And these trials could be rewarding. Peter told the use this past in first Peter 1 6, rejoice greatly, even though for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. You are making jests of me. They did not give me a job. This and this happened. I'm tired. Is this what Christian is all about? We have been warned. And while we are being tried, Peter added, turn from evil to do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Most of the time, your critics, they make you better. Those who criticize us, eventually, they make us better. So now let's see individuals. Under the subhead of personality, they exhumed the social situation in which they lived, the Christian trial and challenges they face. And like I told you, we shall see Paul, Philemon, Onesimus, and probably a few Christian characters. All, all through the write-up, that recurrent word prisoner was there. Parliament chapter one, verse one, in truly you know, it said, a prisoner of Jesus, not a prisoner, not a highway robber, a prisoner of Jesus. And he went on, and, in fact, when he came to Rome in Acts chapter 28, Verse 20, when he appealed to Caesar, he called for the Jews there and told them, for this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you. Because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain, painful social change. He got to Rome in chains. He introduced himself to the Jews they ended up spitting on his face. And when you see sections of the community of that world, he wrote to, in Ephesians chapter six, verse 20, he said, I'm in chains now, still preaching. You can see what he put on his feet. In Philemon verse nine, he talked about himself being a prisoner. In second Corinthians 5, 20, he talked about himself being a prisoner, painful self-introduction. Even to Timothy, his friend, who had to deliver the letter, when he was writing the second letter to Timothy, he said, may the Lord show mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, that's Onesimus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. Only very few people relate to prisoners. And to the Philippians, he was tearing them up. So he, he gave a cheerful, a cheerful profile. The chains don't withstand. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. He forgot his chains and switched to gratitude to God. You see, when they were talking about the Council of Jerusalem, when he, when he, when he was even still free, and he was to attend the stand council at Jerusalem, see what they wrote about him. He seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have added their lives for the sake of our Lord. When he was free, he was taking risks. When he was captured, he was chained down. Whichever way it was, Thanksgiving, did not cease from his mouth. It's not known if he ever was 
in Colossae, Philemon was a Colossian. But to the Colossians, he said, pray for God to open a door for our message that we may preach the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Despite the impediment, his prayer topic was to be able to perfect the work of God. See this photograph, long chain, chain to heavy things. He was giving Timothy the final, the final brief before going to, before going to Philemon. And when he wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy, so talking about Philemon, which I just talked about, call him as an assistant pastor. Call him what you have. The letter was addressed to him and to the church in his house. Secondly, he was a slave owner, a businessman. He still owned the slave and has not relinquished his trade. Although the slave ran away, I beseech thee for my child, whom I have begotten in my bonds. So Philemon was a businessman continuing, although he has been converted to Christianity. He was a slave owner and he was being persuaded in verse 18, if he had wronged you or owed you anything, he was being persuaded to let go. So for Philemon, Christianity did not seem to affect, Christianity did not seem to affect business. So Philemon, although he had allegiance or conversion to Paul's ministry, didn't seem to be bulging. And he had to be reminded that these two staircases are the visa to Christianity. You yourself, you have an allegiance and obligation of Christian character. And besides, let's go to Onesimus for me to get some more time. Onesimus was a slave. He was formerly useless. Not only was he a slave, he was a thief. And there was nothing to talk much about, about his character before conversion. But here was Paul with his feet, with his feet changed. And he's now sending him back. You have to go and make restitution. Stole, ran away, got converted. You have to go back. So he was a slave convert and was trying to develop personality Christian change. Like the porter being remolded. You can see that photograph on top of the quotation. He said, I would have retained him with me that in your stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel, but to make restitution and Christian relationship perfected, Onesimus had to go back. Although he had become a refined vessel, refined vessel, and he's talking about loyalty now, perseverance. And in verse 16, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother, beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto you both? So when he came to Onesimus, he had been refined, he had been perfected, he needed to exhibit Christian character, levels have changed. So the self-loyalty to God, Colossians 3, 22, slaves, in all things obey those who are your masters on earth, not with external service. So Christians are scripturally obliged to see what God is saying, regardless of our situation, and see our Social standing, very, very important as a profile of manifesting Christ. In Colossians 3, 22 to 25, the same thing is happening. 
slaves, obey in all things your masters. Masters according to the flesh, not with eye service, as men's pleasers, but in sincerity of heart. Fearing God, and whatever you do, do it utterly as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you receive the reward of the inheritance for your service. So it's not just enough to become a Christian, it is much more expected to exhibit and exhume Christian character. Let's just say a few characters before we start discussing. How about Abraham? When he was leaving his father and kindred, he took that young man. You could see a man of 99 and a nephew who was a little rat lot with him. But Lord soon grew and levels changed, not just in stature, but in prosperity, and he became naughty. How did Abraham absorb it? Abraham, Christian personality, Abraham went the long way when Lot had separated and risked himself facing three, four, five nations in battle when he found his nephew had been kidnapped, had been taken captive. And if you see this next photograph, Abraham, at that age, at the age of 90, 99, led soldiers, three or three other born in his house. A 99 year old rescue, you know, leading a battle because of a naughty boy, a naughty nephew. He put his life on, at risk. These are personalities of godliness. Let us now see Lot. You will see Nemesis caught with him. His wife had become a stone behind him. The angels caught. These are, the, these are the two daughters who get out of Sodom. And how did he end his life? To be able to raise a family, he had to get drunk to get a family. Those are personalities from childhood through older age group. Let's talk about Joseph. Being let down in the well will describe ex exactly everything that happened to Joseph by the end of 17, he went through that. And at the age of 32, levels are changed. And Genesis 50, 20, what did Joseph say? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save more people alive. That is a godly personality. How about Jesus wearing a ton of crown? See Peter in the middle of those passing by. He even denied him on oath. Jesus, as soon as Mary saw him in the tomb, what did he have to say? Go to my brethren and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father. That is standard Christian personality. Jesus, when, when Peter had let seven other disciples go, go in a fishing, he was by the shore talking to them in his post resurrection fishing miracle. And he told them to cast the nets that will bring jaw breaking revelation and testimony. That's Jesus. And when he had fed them, I was asking if they loved him. He still told them, feed my lambs. Let us see Mr. Peter. As they were going, Peter was still asking him, yes, this John, they say he will not die. He said, what's that, what's your business? So let us see our Christian personalities before and after conversion. Let's see one man called Shimei who lambasted David, and when Solomon had become a king, and he was given a suspended sentence, 1 Kings 2, 36 to 7, the king next called in Shimei and told him, build your house, sell a house in Jerusalem, and live there. But you are not to leave the area. If you so much as cross the brook 
children, you are as good as dead. You have decreed your own death sentence. But the Bible says, see up there, Shemai was focused on his slave trade. Second Kings 2, 39, 30, 40. But as it so happened that three years later, two of Shemai's slaves ran away to Akish son of Maka, king of Gath. Shemai was told, your slaves are in Gath. Shemai sprang into action, saddled his donkey, and went to Akish in Gath, looking for his slaves. And then he came back. You can see the slaves being bound back. Those are personalities in business. He was, he was serving his suspended sentence, he had forgotten. And he went his Waterloo. So the king sent and called for Shemai and said to him, didn't I adjure you by Yahweh and warn you, saying, not for certain, that on the day you go out and walk anywhere else, you shall surely die. You said to me, the saying I've heard is good. So talking about Solomon's security, if you see this chess board, I don't know how to play chess, but Shimai was one of those who are, who are rusticated. He had, to, he, had to, he, had, he had to he had to be executed. Then the king commanded Benai, the son of Yoada, and he went and, and struck him down and he died. So personality, business blinded, met his death. So Adonija, Abiata, Job, and Shimai, they were the ones who had to go for Solomon's throne to be secure. Let's see the unbeliever of a king. Nebuchadnezzar. He was reigning, he was a reigning king with suspended sentence. God has shown me, shown him what will happen. And Daniel advised him, Your Majesty, Daniel 427. Be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right, and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that your prosperity will continue. But, she, but Nebuchadnezzar was so arrogant until he became a mad fellow for seven years. So when we are talking about personalities, we are talking about behavior, rap pattern, in and out of people being led by the Holy Spirit. Yet the Bible says, as we are taught, forgive our sins as we are forgiving those who sin against us. So individuals write their own judgments. Shimei wrote his own judgment. Nebuchadnezzar wrote his own judgment. For Paul, we could say he did write his own judgment because by the time he was going, he said, I fought a good fight. So when we're talking about Christianity, trials and challenges, our personalities, they, 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 they portray which way we are facing. These are the three characters of justice. Cried, Onesimus, a slave, representing you and me. Paul, the mediator, representing Jesus Christ. Philemon, the slave owner, representing God the Father. And how we forgive or don't forgive, they are talking about being a Shimei or a Paul. But let's go on. In Psalm 14, verse 2, you will see this portrait. The Lord looks down from heaven. That's Jesus Christ looking on the sons of men, the children of men, to see whether we are, wise, we are, we are acting wisely. That's Paul in chain. That's his color, say, the lightest color. That's Philemon wondering whether to forgive or not forgive. That's the wife behind him. That's Timothy delivering the letter. And that's Onesimus on the road looking for what his fate will be. The hard fact of Christian magnanimity is what, are, is what all embedded in the challenges. Are you bleeding? Because the religions 2.20 say, I have been crucified with Christ. You can see those two hands. Did the, 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 the nail of Jesus suffering pierce your own? Because if you have been crucified, then you'll be dead. 
and it's only Christ that will live in you. And the personalities will change. But before we stop, I got this from the internet, the challenges that personalities, see 13 personalities is engaged. They manifest 13 personality traits. They complain, I'm going anti conquest They complain, they, are, they lack enthusiasm, people have not been promoted. Ah, uh, you'll soon be fed of you. Uh, no, we have tried it. They lack enthusiasm. They are irresponsible. They don't care what they say. Any question, don't worry, no question. No more growth. They are distracted. There's no longer any initiative. They are independent. You can never go beyond the basket down, down, down floor. They lie. Nobody will tell you I, I stole before they disengage me. They don't even help each other. Can you please help me go, 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 go just leave me alone? They know it all. They presume there's something else to learn. They make excuses because it, just a trial or disengagement from employment will push a lot of people to this personality change, Christian or no Christian, except you watch it. But personality traits that are needed for success, they include at least six definite things among others. Decisiveness, of course. Resilience. Interpersonal sensitivity. Motivation. Self-awareness. Integrity. I'll say it again. Decisiveness, resilience, interpersonal sensitivity, motivation, self-awareness, and integrity. I will deliberately spend five minutes. I will not rush towards the end because this table will be important, very important to you and I. I try to discuss factors that affect personalities. And when I'm talking about personality, I'm talking about the nature and character of a particular person. And I've taken as example, non-Christians and Christian. And as a non-Christian, I've chosen Nabal, the husband, former husband of Abigail. Let's talk about anger. Don't, 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 don't worry whether it was under alcohol or not, but people under alcohol get angry very easily. Some people came to him and asked for a request. First Samuel 25, 10, what did he say? Nabal answered David's servants. Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who are breaking away from their masters. Let me give you a background. Nabal was a Calebite. He was a descendant of Caleb. Caleb were not of the tribe of Judah, but they settled in Judah. And they ate said David. They were lawyers list to Saul. They would tell him where Saul, where David was hiding. And Nabal shared that, you know, bias. And when he heard somebody came from David, he did not want to know whether right or wrong. Who are these people? People are breaking away from their master. David break away, he ran for his dear life. For the child of God, Oh, you're talking about anger. Yes, be angry. Ephesians 4, 26, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down your anger. That, you know, you, as a human being, you can be angry, but there is no excuse for sinning. Let's go on with Nabal. Under alcohol, yes. Paul Samuel 25, 11. Shall I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my sharers and give it to men who come from, I do not know where, alcohol will make you remove all those things. I'll talk about the other one later on. Let's see focus on Nabal. When the alcohol has gone, how did he react to fear and guilt? In the morning, when the wine had gone out of Nabal, his wife told him these things, that this morning the armed men were coming to finish you. And his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. 
heart attack. Peter, Jesus, probably you and I, when the going was tough, did Peter deny Jesus on oath? After saying he would die for him. Under fear. When guilt came, he wailed bitterly. After weeping and they have killed Jesus Christ, he went into hiding. After Pentecost, he had been performing miracles, he was speaking in tongues. After Pentecost, and there was ambiguity about the opposition party or not the opposition party, he paid political evangelism. And Paul blasted him in Galatians 2, 11 to 14. Handling fear and guilt, you need the grace of God. For alcohol, none for Peter. For Nabal, he was very drunk. For the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit judged number. And about 10 days later, the Lord, the Christians, the Bible says, when they are prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. It's when you're under the Holy Spirit that you can speak with boldness. And the Bible says, don't get drunk. Continue being filled with the Holy Spirit. When you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, the flesh can't. So the next question is this, what personality do you exhibit and for which excuse? Because 1 Corinthians 5.10 says, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he had done, whether good or bad. When the Holy Spirit takes over, personalities change. You can see this. 17 items of the flesh, uncleanness, idolatry, emulations, witchcraft, drunkenness, heresies, envies, murders, seditions, rebellion, wrath, strife, variance, lasciviousness, adultery, hatred, fornication. You know, when the Holy Spirit is there, the nine Christian characters, they are sound, meekness, temperance, joy, long suffering goodness, gentleness, faith, peace, and love. And I did put, out of those 17 things, I, I put another one, common leakages of the flesh in religious men. These are the nine characters of the fruit of the spirit, but see what oftentimes filters from the flesh for the man of God, enmity. It can even make you curse your enemy. Right, right. Gossip. I don't know what is called only gossip. See that brother. Addiction. Disobedience. Envy. Lying. Doubts. These still filter in Christians today. Now, what was the strength of Paul for me to live that I may know him and the power of his resurrection? Philippians 3 10 to 14. That I may know Christ and the power of his resurrection, that I may suffer, shine his, in his, shine his death, so that one way or the other I will experience the resurrection from the dead. No presumption that he's going to heaven. He was focused and in verse 13 and 14, forgetting the past, including successes, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race. And receive the heavenly prize. That one focus on the Holy Spirit is what will make Christian character stable. And before I stop, Hebrews 10, 7, Hebrews 13, 7. Copy faith, not personalities. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their life. Imitate their faith, not imitate their personalities. So when you see leaders in murky waters, in the left down, not personalities that are murky. The leader, the radiance above, 
still copy his face, but not his personality. This man was wearing jeans and T-shirts with a lady as good as a daughter. Copy his face, not his personality. This is why we crash when we copy the leader with everything we think he because he's a man of God. Our memory verses. I appeal to you for my child on his muscles father have become in my imprisonment. Formerly it was useless to you, but now is indeed useful to you and to me.